more educational resources like our HMP notebooks, check out medicalbasics.com. So in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the tips on how to do well during your sub I or your sub internship during fourth year of medical school. So just a very general overview. I think that third year and fourth year are quite different, actually, in, in what your responsibilities are and also what are you really being graded on. I think that definitely in third year, you're trying to impress with knowledge. You're trying to show that you really know as much as you can and, and show that you have all this knowledge that you've been studying and preparing. I think that as a fourth year, it's the understanding that you have that baseline knowledge, that you're no longer being tested on how much you know. It's expected that you know something about your specific specialty. But now it's more about can you apply that knowledge that you have into being an efficient and a good worker, someone that they can see themselves working with as when you're an intern or when you're a resident. And so it's definitely a very different transition that you'll you'll realize very quickly once you, you switch over from third year into fourth year. I think that there's certain specialties inherently, radonc, derm, opto, a lot of the surgical subspecialties, that's that I can't necessarily say it's like that. I think that a lot of it's still going to be very similar to what it's like during third year, especially when you're not having that same responsibility that you would have in medicine of being able to manage patients on the floor on your inpatient service. I think it's definitely very different. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. So I think talking with your friends, just like during third year of finding the best rotation site, finding which place is going to be the best to really help you succeed, when to do it, I think is very important and finding where specifically, because a lot of these sub eyes you're also doing a ways. We're not going to be talking about a ways at this very second, but I think that even just site to site, if you go from your county hospital to your VA to your uh, academic hospital, I think every site will be different. I think you have to talk with upperclassmen to figure out what, where's going to be the best for you to do do it. I think that also if you do a research year, it's probably not the best idea to do a sub I immediately after your research year. I think you should ease into it doing some type of easier rotation and then build your way into your sub I because sub I is really where you want to perform extremely well, especially if you're doing a sub I in your specific specialty, the field that you want to go into. So I personally did uh, a few sub I's. I did medicine sub I because we were acquired. I did a surgical sub I because that's what I'm planning to go into. And then I also did some other sub eyes as well, just more for requirements like ER, ICU, things like that. So I, I'm going to kind of compare between a medicine and surgical sub eye to kind of give you that perspective. So I think that for a medicine sub eye, extremely different from third year where you have so much more responsibility than you had as a third year. Oftentimes you're putting in orders. You're the one who's answering the pages. You're the ones who's going to be the first to, to be called and the first one, not necessarily to make the decisions. I think that definitely smaller decisions is going to be on you, but you're still always going to be working with the resident, probably not going to be working with an intern as much as you did in third year, definitely going to be working directly with the resident and the attending. So still you have a lot more responsibility, but you still always supervise responsibility that you're always having somebody to watch your back, always having somebody who's going to be really be making those decisions, but you're like, like an intern, you're, you're collecting data rather than being the one to act on that data. So you have to be a good reporter and a good collector in terms of all that data, much more so than your third year. So I think that definitely in your medicine, very similar to third year, you go to rounds, you pre-round, you go to rounds, you put in orders, you use some procedures your patients may need, and then you answer pages. And I think the, the biggest difference is probably the pages, which I didn't think was going to be too much different than third year, but you realize that it's actually quite different. Being the one to be answering the pages, being the, the first responder essentially, is a much different level of responsibility and a lot more to juggle than you would immediately think about. So I think really what fourth year is all about is being efficient. So showing that you can handle a lot of different tasks and not just handle them, but do them still very well and with high efficiency and also effectiveness. So I think that being very proactive and anticipating future problems, anticipating things that your team may need. So always thinking a couple steps ahead, who may we need to talk to, who may be information that we may need from the family or maybe from other surgical subspecialties or also just consults that you're calling. If you're talking to them about one specific 
a procedure or one specific thing that needs to be done, always asking them in the future, well, if this doesn't work or if this does work, what will be our next steps? What will be kind of the end result? Because I think that that's really how these residents and these attendings, they want to know those answers, especially when you're calling for consult. So those are little things that just being proactive and talking to families, keeping them in the loop is going to be very important. So I think that's spending time with the families and getting to know them, but obviously not too much time so you're not being efficient, but enough time. So for example, I think it's really important that oftentimes we don't have enough time to talk to the families or update the families on what's going on. So I think that Definitely, if you had already done that, your resident or your attending asked you, oh, do you mind updating the family? And obviously, these are things that are just more routine, not these big decisions that you just kind of go out on a limb by yourself and, and update the family. But, you know, really small decisions that you know the family will want to know or should know eventually. And this all just takes um, practice and just being, being smart about it. Obviously, don't do too much on your own, but also do a little bit so that you can be proactive and anticipate future problems. So it's all about balance and just being smart about what you should and shouldn't do. In order to be efficient, I think that some of the things that you should be doing is always have a system that works for you. It's going to be a little bit different because there's going to be a lot more to-dos. There's going to be a lot more things that you just have to do day to day. And these could be something as simple as calling a console, putting in orders, uh, writing your note, or doing some type of procedure. But these are all things that you cannot forget. And when you have to juggle more patients, now in third year, you're maybe dealing with one, two, or three patients. Now you're dealing with probably three, four, or five patients. And it's not a whole lot, but it's definitely more than I think you would be used to as a third year. So I think have little confidence in your memory, write everything down, make a to-do list, and just have a system that works for you. I think that everybody has their own system and some may need to write more things down, some may need to write less things down, but just have a system and stick with it. I think just like before, prep your notes and presentations before rounds or, or the night before. I think that the last thing you want to be doing is just the whole day just writing a note. They, they know that that's not efficient. That's not a good use of your time, especially if you're slow note writer. I think that as you went through third year, you probably got much more efficient, much faster in writing notes. But I think that definitely for those who are a little bit slower at writing notes, and you know, definitely try to prepare that beforehand so that you're doing a lot more of the tasks that are important rather than just these tasks that um, have to be done. Like writing notes just has to be done. Um, but it's not something that's really going to be helping the patient in, in the day-to-day -day, or at least in the immediate day-to-day. -day. And this one... I guess this is another efficiency tip that you can take, but only do it if you have permission to do it, which is paging consults during or before rounds so that you can kind of peel off. You notice that a lot of the interns, the ones that are efficient are not the ones who are just waiting around on rounds and then after everything is over, then calling all their consult and doing all the things they have to do there. They're in during rounds and they put all their consults in before rounds or during rounds. And so they're no longer waiting for a phone call. They'll get a phone call while they're, on rounds while they're waiting for someone else to present and they'll peel out and they'll talk to them and they'll come back, update the team at a later time. But I think that that's one way that can sink so much of your time is that if you have to call four or five consults in a day and you're just waiting till after rounds, which sometimes can end at 12 or 1 p.m. and you're waiting until 1 p.m. to put in your consult and then you have to wait hour or two hours for them to call back, uh, that's going to be a really big time sinker. And so definitely do this if you've gotten permission. I think not everybody would have have permission. Some people don't like their sub eyes or their med students peeling out during rounds. They want them to be present 100%. And if that's the case, then definitely do not do this. But I think that uh, you have to kind of just weigh it and, and figure out what will work for this team that you're working with. And always take on more patients, but never sacrifice quality. So if you feel like you're taking on more patients and the quality is getting decreased, you're missing certain to-dos or you're having to stay until 10 p.m. every single day, you know, that, that doesn't necessarily look the greatest. They want you to be efficient and they also want to see that you're able to handle the job. But if you're overextending yourself as for a lower quality of work, I don't think that's ever a good thing. Um, I think it's, it always has to be a balance. Next one is being very proactive. I touched on this a little bit, talking about doing simple tasks before you're asked. I think that it's really important to feel out your team, to feel out what exactly your responsibilities are, what exactly they expect of you. And so, you know, little things like I mentioned before, 
talking to families, getting a little bit more information from the consults uh, that you talk to and, and just kind of doing these little tasks that can get you one step ahead are definitely important, but you always have to do it with a grain of salt. You have to not do too much so that, for example, I do not think uh, that you should be calling consults before you're even asked. I don't think that's necessarily a smart thing because who knows if you're attending or your resident even wanted a consult. So you always wait for big decisions or putting in orders or these big decisions that can really alter um, patient care or their team dynamics. You definitely want to wait for those, but little things, very little things, like getting information from a family that you think will be important later on or talking to them about what has been going on. I think those are little things that I think the team really appreciates because they don't necessarily have the time to do that. And also another big, big thing is not only DC summaries, so prepping your DC summaries as you go is going to be super crucial so that when the time comes and they say, oh, we were anticipating the patient to be discharged on Friday, but now today's Wednesday and out of chance the, the patient got so much better and they're ready to go home. And if they're just waiting on you to write up a DC summary to, to get all of the, figure out what all the meds were and all of that. And that's not efficient. That's not being proactive. You need to prepare for a patient being discharged at any time. You have to be ready for that. It shows that you're very proactive if you are very prepared, if you're very prepared for anything that can be unexpected. So DC summaries is a, is a great thing. Notes are a great thing as well. Not spending the entire day writing a note, that would be not proactive. So try to prep it before rounds, the night before, at least some parts of it. Obviously, you can't do the whole thing. Keeping families informed is very important and just anticipating next steps of kind of the breaking points, like what I was mentioning before, talking to, to consults about what will be the next steps if such and such happens or such and such doesn't happen, figuring out what those next steps are because everybody wants to know. And as a third year, oftentimes you don't necessarily have the knowledge to think that far ahead, but I think as a fourth year, they really do expect you to do that. And also just giving the full picture. So I think it's important to not be afraid to talk to the people that you consult and really getting picking their brain, figuring out what exactly they're thinking because I guarantee you attending or your resident is gonna ask you more detailed questions than they would have expected you to ask um, as a third year. So definitely ask as many questions as you can. I know that oftentimes these consults may be kind of abrupt, kind of short with you, but I think that you know, ultimately they're not the ones, if I were to be honest, they're not the ones that are going to be grading you. They're not the ones who are going to be evaluating you. The people that want the information are going to be evaluating you. So you better have that information. And even if they get a little bit annoyed, as long as you're not rude, obviously, as long as you're just genuinely curious and want to know a little bit more, they may be, uh, the consoles may be annoyed with you, but I think that it's important to get that information. So definitely be proactive, get as much as information as you think could be necessary for your team. Next one is from a perspective of a surgical sub eye. So because I've done both, I have a little bit of perspective and quite different actually. I think that definitely when you'll do a lot of different things, I think that in a surgical subspecialty, you'll definitely be doing a variety of activities. You'll definitely be rounding and doing floor work similar to medicine. And I think that what I just said about your medicine sub eye definitely will apply to your surgical sub eye. But I think that a surgical sub eye still is very similar to third year in regards to the OR work. So when you're in the OR, you're working with the attendings and really it's all about knowledge. It's about knowledge and skills. So you still need to really prepare the case beforehand, know the, all the patient's history, their past medical, their family history, all the meds that they're on, the, the history that brought them to the hospital, and also just know about the disease and about the procedure. And also just have your basic skills down at the very least. You definitely should have more surgical skills than you had when you're on your third year surgery rotation. But you know, definitely just practice as much as you can so that you're as fluid as possible. So I think that the bad thing is that you kind of have to be a really good medicine sub eye as well as having this knowledge and these surgical skills to do well in the OR. So it's almost like two things that you have to be mindful of. So definitely memorize all your patient stories, preview all the imaging beforehand, and try to help on as many tedious procedures as you can. I think that, and it all depends on the, the practice that you're in, the program that you're in, by now, they hopefully have a little bit more confidence in you. So very small things like, for example, maybe checking on a patient's drain or changing the patient's dressing or checking on the patient's you know, pain and, and whether or not the, the drain side is, is draining correctly. I think that those little things, if you can be as proactive, even if they're not your own patients, but try to do these very small tasks and try to be as helpful to your intern or your resident as much as possible, I think it would be very important because it can show that 
you're able to balance a lot of different things. You're able to not only handle your patients, but also handle other people's patients and be very helpful to the rest of the team. Because these are things that no one wants to do, right? No one wants to do these tasks where they're just running around the hospital, checking on these things that, you know, just need to be triaged. They just need to be triaged and then kind of escalated. And that's what an intern does in their in their surgery internship is really all about triage, is doing these small tasks that take a lot of time that no one else wants to do, uh, but really help the patient a lot. Um, and then triaging when things are a little bit tougher, when things um, are going south, and that, that's when you got to tell someone. So I think that being able to do that as a sub eye is very important, especially on your surgery sub eye, just because everybody's so busy. I mean, this one is similar to the other one that I had an asterisk nest to, which was figuring out whether or not you can hold a pager. I think that it all depends on the practice that you're in, but I think it, it shows that you're, and these are more of the team pagers, like for example, if you're on trauma or if you're, you have a console pager, things of that nature. Obviously, it, it all depends on the practice that you're in and the, and the institution that you train in and how they do things. But if you've heard of people in the past doing it and you feel confident in your ability to, to answer some of these pages and other of your classmates have done it and have been successful at it, then definitely just ask. Ask if you're able to do it. I think it shows that you're being trying to be as helpful as you can, but obviously don't overextend yourself. And just like every other rotation, really know everything that you're talking about. You're going to have no one to rely on. This, this goes for surgery or your medicine sub eye is that, yeah, you will have your resident, you'll have your attending, but when people call you, when the nurse calls you, when you call your consults and they call you back or when you know, radiology calls you, and you know, they want to have information, they're going to talk to you. The last thing you want to do, I think this really is one of the worst possible things you can do, is that when a consult is calling you and you're unable to give them the information that they want and they request to talk to your resident or request to talk to your attending or request to call somebody higher up, I think that always is a poor sign that you're not prepared, that you're not prepared in the questions that you have, you're not prepared in the knowledge that you have. So definitely that's something you always want to avoid. I think inevitably it happens. Sometimes residents or even attendants just say, I, I do not talk to med students. That's just how it is. But the last thing you want to do is they frequently talk to med students, but they just won't talk to you. That's what you really want to avoid. So that's what I mean by there's no one really that you should be relying on because you're the first line. You always will have support. And that goes with any time in your training, you're always going to have support. But you want to, as best as possible, handle the, the simple tasks on your own, especially the ones that are more information gathering know the patient's history, know the labs and events, just like every other case, just like third year, just like other rotations during fourth year. And so in conclusion, I think that really it's all about being efficient, having a good system and anticipating future problems. So being proactive, trying to get as much information as you can and trying to pick as many brains as you can and just anticipate future problems without overextending yourself or stepping on anyone's shoes or doing things that you really shouldn't be doing on your own. It's really just being smart about what you think. And this goes all back to really what have you observed? You have observed other sub eyes that have gone through this. What have they done well? And, and try to pick up on those things that you recognize during third year. Be confident, be flexible, um, and most importantly, try to be as useful as you can because you're no longer a third year in med school. You're trying to be as useful and not take up people's time, but try to save time when you can. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our medical ID card scrub notes. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.